Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiaboo and I am here for more episode 2 treasure hunting. This time we're here for Gleipnir, episode 2. First episode of Gleipnir was not at all what I expected in any kind of way, and there was no way I could have expected it, so I'm kind of expecting the unexpected going into episode 2. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it does. Um, so, we met a boy last time. And he's a weird boy, he's got a crazy sense of smell, and some kind of link or connection that he seems to have with either animals in general or just Tanuki, uncertain. Um, and then he found, he smelled, I guess, he, he, he found a fire, and uh, then, then became his fursona in order to save uh, a relatively scantily clad girl from the fire in a couple of pretty excellent action shots. He's got this weird, creepy uh, suit thing that he turns into that gives him superpowers. Okay. Uh, and he saves her. Turns out it was all kind of a trap, and she really wants to know more about him and all that stuff. And she's kind of a yandere-ish, I guess. Uncertain at this point, but we'll find out. And then they got attacked by some other person who seems to have other kinds of powers. There's a lot of mystery in this story. We don't know who he is, how he got his powers, what they're about, what his powers are useful for, what what he can do, what the story is going to be, who's maybe antagonistic against him, what the goals are. We don't know anything. But episode one was kind of cool. So I'm going to watch episode two and see if it's also kind of cool. And if it is, maybe we'll watch more. So let's go ahead and dive on into Gleipnir episode two. I've got it up and ready. It's zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction. Picture in picture version will be available in the description. Timer based version will be up on YouTube. If you want to sync up with the timer based version, sure. Just get your copy ready because the timer to count you down will come in at you now. Have we seen this? I don't think we've seen this. Oh, wait. I think we have seen this. Because I remember the coins turning into the... Yeah, okay. We've seen this. That girl knows how to walk. <laughs> or I should say, whoever's drawing her knows how to draw... Uh, uh, uh... A walk cycle. <laughs> Man, what's the deal with the cross-shaped uh, pupil? I don't know. And why did they match cut between them there? Is it because they're fighting together, or are they fighting as one? And why is he two sides, one black and one white, sewn together? And again, another match cut through. For some reason, that cut, as she comes up like this, is very, uh... Ava-esque. Ray, I'm thinking? I think so. Maybe the cut where she does the thing? Maybe. Hello, Neko. Okay, so he likes all animals. Hello, coin? Are we about to have another... Gotta have the tokens. Well, okay, that character is involved. So, character desperately seeking a way to improve herself? All right, and she's found a coin. Welcome to your new life. Okay. So we only got to see this in flashback form. 
But as you turn away, the man at head just gets out. What the fuck? Suddenly, she's going to be breaking her times. Yeah. I want to hide that. Okay, she she is the one who attacked them, isn't she? Okay. Why the pantsu shot though? Why? I mean, I know why, but. Oh. Alright, so this is how she overheard. And then she followed them. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so not directly sent by a shadowy organization to assassinate. But on her first day of having powers. I mean, you can try. Well, that kind of works. Yeah, pepper spray will do it. <laughs> Yeah, that that's reasonable. It was for you. Yeah, that is a bit of a pressing issue. You're lucky that your visage is hidden. Okay. We're in this together. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yep, unzip that shit. I don't know, dude. You're a fucking superpowered stuff animal. Empty void? It's 
stuffing. Empty void. That's that was something somebody else said to him, right? Stepping on ants. Hmm. A fake. Okay, that's probably why we got the match cuts. <laughs> you think he's a mecha? Hey, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's the blush. Uh. Uh. Oh. Ah, oh, come on. Legit, like, just just listen to that whole scene without looking at the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, it's super intentional. Yeah, it's super duper intentional. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start moving now. <laughs> Is that the next line? Oh my god. You dick. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hello. Mm, still one of my favorite lines. <laughs> no matter how many times I hear it, no matter who's saying it. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I'm right here. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I think you just got got. All right, maybe not. Hmm. Now that was a cut. There's that memory again. Mm. 
Murder time. Oh my god, pulled her back in for it. Ugh! Okay. That was dope. I'll say. Hey. Hey. There we go. Jesus, against the wall. She's not going to stop, dude. She, you, you got mercy. She does not. And she knows that this girl will kill you. That's fucking scary. The D&B soundtrack continues. Oh, she's gonna do it. Yeah, it's me. Put him in the vending machine. And snap. Ah! What are you going to do, Shuichi? So you're going to run away from the truth, then? Ugh! I do not think you can. I think you are. All right, bud, keep running away from the truth. Uh Yay. Okay. Not really the time. Mm-hmm. Except... Oh, there's a girl who kept looking over. Oh, fuck. Yeah, we killed the only person who would have known. Yeah, you climbed inside. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, she loves it all, and he hates it all. It's, it's okay, it's literally Shinji Asuka. Hmm... <laughs> It was. <sighs> Yo, Shuichi, 
get in the glipe near. Mm-hmm. Now you guys have got to Jaeger that shit. So, we combine. Hmm. I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious it is, but okay. And transform and catcher. Yep, there we go. Ah, oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, that works. Skin in the game. Ooh. Half a year earlier, okay? Is that her sister? Oh. Oh. Also, who's that voice? Oh, that's her. Okay.
at the hotel. Okay, do we get a little preview thingy? Elena. Okay, 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 okay. Mm, kind of stuck on that, that, that last line. There's someone I want to be with. Okay. And she has a keychain of that character, of that, that whatever it is. So are we looking at Elena? That could track. And then the backfire was that she turned into a monster. This was six months ago. She's got very much the same sort of hairstyle as our main girl with the, the forelock that droops over the eyes. And the similar color eyes. I think we might be looking at Elena here. Okay, I want to hear her voice again. Huh? Ooh, ooh, who is that? I want to say that's a Chiafru character. I'm going to I'm going to take a second and do everything I can can to not spoil myself while finding out who that is. <laughs> okay, well, I definitely recognized the voice, but but uh I was wrong about it being Chiafru completely. I recognized it because it's motherfucking Hanakana. It's it's Hanakanazawa. Uh or Kana, wait, I forget. I forget which way it goes. Kana Hanazawa, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hanakana. You you have the 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 two first characters and both of your names are Hana and Kana. God. Um alright, so it's Hanakana and that is Edena. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but we would probably find out immediately at the first, at the beginning of the next episode, and I was pretty, pretty certain that it was supposed to be her anyway. Okay, so we're implying that that she made a wish of some kind, but she wished it on Shuichi. And the context was, there's someone I want to be with. So was the plan to make it so that she would hopefully be the one to climb inside him and do the, the definitely not sex that they definitely did in this episode. I don't know. We're, we're on, we're on baseless speculation territory and I need to, I need to step back out of that territory into just analyzing what we've actually seen. Um, I thought this episode was pretty solid. It continued to hold my attention. There are things here that I find a little bit iffy. Uh, the, 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 the constant fan service is like, all right, sure. It's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a groovy, gritty, sexy thing that we're going for, and so it fits. But there's there there are little bits like the the the, the sort of random panty shot that we get is she's like freaking out. Yeah, she's so she's freaking about out about her claws and stuff, and then she's smacking grass and stuff. Then we get this shot of her cleavage, and then this shot of her pantsu. Why? I don't know. I really don't know why that's there. It's not exactly like, it's not like a tantalizing panty shot. I don't think. But I mean, that's up to up to preference. But like, why is that there? Why is that there? I don't know. I don't have a problem with it necessarily. It's just unnecessary. I'd say unnecessary. Now, it it makes sense to do sexual things for these two because 
he's a, a, a teenage boy with fantasies and shit, and she's real comfortable with her body, so it's like, all right, sure. Uh, and also, they're going to be joining as one in a very, this is this is a metaphor for sex, but it's not a metaphor for sex, we promise, kind of way. Um, yeah. 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 All right, what is the coin? Blah, 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 blah. Some, some cool framing tricks here, like this one. This is nice. Uh, we did get our big answer to the question that I had, which was, why are there all these very intentionally placed match cuts uh, in the OP where... Because it's the same kind of a match fade that you use for, um, like, here's the mecha, and it's going in for a punch, and here's the guy inside, and he's gritting his teeth, and we fade between the face of the mecha and the guy inside so that you get a connection between them, and you can understand that that's the pilot of that mecha, and he's doing the thing. That's the kind of match cut that we were getting. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? Are they going to join? Are they going to gatai? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, yeah. So she unzips him. While she's wearing her 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 panties, uh, she unzips him, and then we get some lines. So let's go through let's go through the lines here, because out of context or in context, they're very intentional. All right, so huh? What what's in there? Blah 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 blah. You're empty. Blah 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 blah. Blah blah blah. I need to get inside you. I feel like this will make us one. So that's where we kind of start. And then he blushes. All right. And then he agrees. And then she she sensually touches the gloopy gorp, pulls out some definitely not bodily fluids, and strings them between her fingers for a little bit. Talks about how sticky and moist it is. Are you ready? I'm going in. And then he kind of gasps. Wow, it's so sticky and moist as she kind of undulates. Please be gentle. It's my first time. I'm going all the way in. Here I go. It's so warm and it fits just right. Mm hmm. Does it hurt? N no. B -b -b Baka. We are one now. It's it, the whole thing is like Jesus. I've, I've I've read some hentai before, uh, just a little bit. Uh, like, come on! But it's very intentional, and and it's there for its purpose, and it's fine. It works. I, I actually don't have any problem with it. It's it's humorous more than anything. Ah. <sighs> So, we will combine, we will fight, and it will be great. Now, there are a couple of great cuts in this uh, this fight sequence. A whole lot of lot of quick one-and-dones, though. Um, it's the, the extended sequences that I really liked. So, let's see. So, this is where she grabs the leg. No, we want, we want the point where she starts to turn it. Yeah, okay, okay. So here she goes. Hardcore. Alright, alright. So, what what happens here? She goes in for the punch, and we follow closely. We follow this flip of the whip. Smack to smack. Twist and grab. So grabs the leg, and we're inside of her, her viewpoint for those shots, and then we snap out of it for impact. So... Inside her viewpoint, snap out of it for impact. The punch, and then the the what do you call those things? The little like balloon on a on a rubber band that you go bop 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 bop. Uh, yeah, that's that's what she does because she's holding onto her leg. So she pulls her and throws her back before coming in for a left. Oof! I like that cut. That's fun. It's choreographed. It's intentional. It's it's good. It's got it's got style to it. And then we immediately follow that one up with a, a pretty extended exchange of blows with lots of nice smears going and, and lots of cool stuff. And I think what I, what I really appreciate about this is, like, we've got this sort of shaky cam going on, but it's not too distracting. It's more just trying to keep everything in frame. And the characters are moving this way. They're moving on this axis. It's like, um...
fighting game community is going to shit on me for this one, but it's like looking at the difference between Street Fighter and Tekken. Street Fighter on a 2D plane, Tekken on a 3D battleground. This fight occurs in a 3D battleground. Characters can move this way, like that, around the camera. Um, and so, and we see a lot of that as she gets like buffeted back toward us in this next exchange there and comes up real close for the eye shot and then brings it right back in with a kick. It's fun. This is, this is a fun sequence. I think it's really good. And then we get real brutal, which is also really good. It's, it's great. We get the leg snap. It's awful. A nice crunch noise. Nice and, nice and horrific. Lovely. And then the this. That's just intimidating. That is that is the face of, oh shit, I may have fucked up. And uh the the behind her the face of pepper your angus, cause it's going in dry. The bullet, I mean. No mercy. Zero mercy. Alright, so then she emerges covered in gloop. It's kinda gross. She makes a really gross joke. I don't know why. It's kinda off putting. And then she wants to talk more, and they eventually start to try to kind of work out their bullshit. And at this point, I, I think I said it in the reaction, but I just went, oh shit, it's Chinji and Asuka. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's not. She's not an Asuka character. She's, she's not. She's not the same kind of driven. She's not the same kind of naive. She's not a whole lot of things. But he is very much a fucking Shinji. Very, very much a fucking Shinji. We have... We have a, a depressed acting boy who's all sad all the time and walks around alone a lot. I mean, he does have school friends, but like, whatever. We hardly see them. He is also, he, he is the only person who is capable of doing the particular thing that he can do. Because reasons... And he's super reluctant to actually ever do it. Blah. Blah. That said, I don't dislike Shinji as a character. And the reason for that comes much, much later in Evangelion. It's because Shinji changes a little bit. Like, a little bit. He, he gets, at the very least, he gets called out on his fucking bullshit more than a few times. Um, more than a few times. The thing with starting a character in what I would consider an unlikable position, like this one, is there's room to grow. And so we get to go on that journey with this character, and potentially go in really interesting places with him. His, his contrast, like the difference between him and his now partner in her, is really interesting. She is far more likable to me than he is. Far more interesting as a character. I mean... Let's let's be honest here. Main boy has zero motivation. In fact, does not want to do transforming, is terrified of transforming, doesn't want to be discovered, doesn't just wants to live a quiet life with nobody ever finding out his secret, and then that's it. That's all he wants. She has motivations. Her family was uh, murdered by her sister after her sister turned into a monster due to this coin thing that is affecting their current situation and seems to be the, at the core of every conflict that they've faced so far. She has goals. She has reasons for being here. She has a reason for being. She's the one who needs the power. She's the one who needs the, the, the means to reach her ends. Shuichi doesn't have ends. At this point in the story, he is means alone. And he doesn't want to be. Because he doesn't have anything that he cares about. That's interesting. And he's conflicted and uncertain of his own motivations. That's also interesting. We see that in the ending sequence where she promises that she will die with him. He, 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 he postulates, okay, what, what if I were to say that I would die right now? And she goes up to a, like a second story balcony where she'll probably break a, a few bones. But regardless, it works. Um, she goes up to the balcony and throws herself off saying i'll be waiting for you just proving her loyalty to their cause essentially but it's also like she doesn't have another shot right this is her shot she has the ability to harness this power of this effectively pretty weak-willed boy and 
utilize him to reach her goals. So if her life is worth these secrets and answers to her, then of course she would make that gamble, right? Of course she would. I'll throw my life away because if I demonstrate my willingness to, perhaps that will enable me to actually reach my goals. And of course he jumps and saves her. Of course. I mean, it would have been really awkward if she'd had to, to, to walk around on crutches for the next, like, six months or whatever. However long it takes to heal a broken, broken leg. Because <laughs> that's probably what she would get from that second floor balcony. <laughs> Mm. Well, she swan dived onto the concrete. I don't know. Is it swan dived or swan dove? I don't know. All right, so reluctant boy, driven girl. He can't stop himself. Can't stop. Can't prevent his instincts from jumping to save someone who's in trouble. Well, we finally found out some things. Also didn't find out some things. Also, some weird stuff happened. I kind of liked it. I think I'll watch more Gleipnir. Okay, me too, boo. This Gleipnir, I thought it was still pretty good. I'll probably keep watching it. It's definitely kind of, kind of, edgy? And I hesitate to use that word because it's not really legitimate. But it is is kind of dark for the sake of being dark, gory for the sake of being gory, sexy for the sake of being sexy, dramatic and mysterious for the sake of being dramatic and mysterious. But as a whole package, it's enjoyable. It flows well. It it it's fun to look at. It's fun to speculate about. It's fun to think about. And it is kind of sexy. Cool. That's that's enough for me. I am I'm satisfied. Okay. Me to you, boo. This clip near. I hope to catch you next week because I'll probably watch episode three. See you there. Peace.